Hello and welcome to RetroCore and today we're going to be taking a look at whatever this is. So not content with knocking off the Neo Geo mini arcade machine, the Chinese are now trying to modify this to be a bit more modern and slimline. And this is the next device to come out of China. And to be honest, it looks like a bento box. If you don't know what a bento box is, well, I'm sure you'll see when I show you this side. Yeah, look at that. It basically looks like a Japanese uh, takeaway box. So um, let's take a look and see what we get inside the cardboard box. Yeah, just that. We get a USB-C cable and a mini manual. Not a lot. And here's the actual device itself. Yeah, it looks like a takeaway meal. But it's not. It's actually a games console. Okay, so taking a look around the back, we can see it has a variety of inputs. We have two USB sockets here. They are going to be used to connect different controllers to this for multiplayer games. We've got HDMI out, headphone socket out, micro SD card slot, USB-C, which is used to charge the 10,000 milliamp battery. And believe me, the battery on this lasts for a very long time. I've had this playing for over an hour and it still says it's on full power. And we've got the power on and off button there. So let's open up the device and see what it's like on the inside. There we go. So we do have six face buttons and they are micro switched. Have a listen. Yep, they got little protective uh, covers on there which need to be taken off. And we have a start and select up here, a back button and a volume buttons here. But where's the joystick? Well, enable to fold this down flat, the joystick is actually removable and it's hidden away in this little compartment right here. So let's get that out and let's just screw it in. Should just screw in nice and easy. There we go. We can put that back on there. And the joystick, as to be expected, is micro switched. So that's good. The throw on it is a little bit long, but uh, it's not too bad. Okay, let's switch on the machine and see what it's like running. Okay, so the first thing we see is a history, game, movie, file, and settings. So before we get into the games, let's just take a look at some of the other features. Will it play high definition video files? Well, I do have a 720p video file in here, and let's see if it plays it. No problem at all. Now the built-in speaker here is only mono, but it is very loud and actually Quite a good speaker, it's got a nice bass to it. Let me just crank this up to full volume. Yeah, that's pretty loud. By the way, this video, in case you're wondering, is a promotion video from Sega to promote the uh, Astro City Mini. I thought it was kind of funny putting it on this device. Okay, so as well as being able to play videos, we can also play music files, although it doesn't have any music option here. So if we go to the file section, we can see music here, and there we can play music files as well. So this is an MP3 at 320 kilobytes per second, recorded it at uh, 48 megahertz. So basically the highest quality MP3 can go. Apparently it also plays WAV and FLAC files, but I haven't tried them out. Okay, let's get out of that. So for display, you can go with equal proportion, which knocks it into 4 by 3 aspect ratio, which is the best way to play it in my opinion, or full screen so you get the full 16 by 9 stretched image. Not the way to play. Languages, there's a multitude of languages in there, but we'll keep it on English. Theme, different types of background themes. Backlight, we've got it on full at the moment. That's the lowest it goes. It's not the best screen in the world, but you know, it's not too bad. Backlight timeout, connection, that's where you can uh, either choose to control it with the joystick or computer. Basically, you can connect this up to a computer as well and use this as a computer joystick. Not sure why you'd want to do that, but you can. All right, so 
let's take a look and see what type of games we get built into this machine. Alright, a bit closer to the screen now, let's take a look. So straight away we can see we've got CPS, but that's basically MAME, Final Burn Alpha, Famicom, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Game Gear, Mega Drive, Neo Geo, PlayStation, and Super Famicom. Now here's the weird thing about this. The machine uses a pre-script, so it actually has all the games listed here. And it says it's got 25 pages. And you can also see that some of the games have screenshots. So you can add your own screenshots for games that are not in there, but they have to be renamed to the exact same name as the uh, file. And the bad thing is, is that a lot of the games have the uh, Japanese, <laughs> Chinese translations of the game names, so some of them don't even make sense. So Knights of the Round Table, that's normal. So Go Go Devil Boy is actually Go Go Ackman. Um, so yeah, go figure. So any games that you add to the machine are not going to show up in this menu system, but don't worry, you can still access them by simply going to File, Game, and then choose the machine or the folder you put the uh, games into, and they will be in the order in which you added them. And as you can see, I've added some extra games to it, ones that use special chips. So let's see if it will run these special chip games, starting with DSP. Will it run Super Famicom Pilot Wings? Okay, let's get into the game, and I have a feeling this is going to work perfectly fine. Alright. Yep, no problem whatsoever, so it plays DSP. Let's see if I can land this plane. Bit weird playing this on a joystick actually. Look at that, perfect. <laughs> well, close enough to perfect anyway. All right, how about Super FX chip games? Will it run those? Well, we got Super FX 2 game here, Doom. Let's see if it'll run that. Well, it's playing. Sound is a little bit choppy, but it's playing a Super FX 2 game. All right, watch, shoot. Weird. I've actually got no bullets coming out. <laughs> oh, well, it kind of plays it. And yes. It plays Star Fox just fine. Again, a bit weird playing it with a joystick, but it works. So this is gonna be a good test for the joystick. Let's see how it performs. if the uh, buttons are configured correctly. The pausing by the way is like that on a real Super Nintendo. It's actually de decompressing all the data. So it does that on a real machine. Okay. Just that works good. Do all the moves. Dragon Punch, oops. Oh, 
let's see how well PlayStation performs on this device. So we got a couple of PlayStation games built in. In fact, we got uh, 21 PlayStation games built in. Battle one, fight. <laughs> Yeah, seems smooth enough, doesn't it? Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to move over to the TV and connect this up to the TV via HDMI and see how good the arcade emulation is. Because to be honest, a lot of people are going to be connecting this up to a TV, so we've got to see if it holds up. So here we have it connected up to the TV, and this is a 720p signal coming from the actual device onto the TV. You can see my reflection there on the TV. And it's uh, scaling to a 4K screen here, and as you can see, it looks very nice indeed. And it still plays very smoothly on the PlayStation games. So let's uh, go out of that and into the arcade section, and let's see how good the arcade stuff run runs. Now it's very good to see there's playing uh, Tate shooters in vertical aspect ratio. All right, let's get a credit into this. We do get stereo sound through the actual uh, HDMI, so that's good. And I have to say, um, the image quality is not bad at all. I mean, it's not super sharp, but it's not covered in some horrible blurry filter either. It's quite nice. Alright, let's see. We want to try and get something that's not Capcom or Neo Geo. Here we go. Cave. Let's get a bit of Cave going. Oh, Robocop as well. Now, Robocop usually has issues on these devices. Let's see if uh, it runs fine on this. That's not Robocop, it's Eastwood. <laughs> oh well. Let's uh, see if this runs. Oh, the car disappeared then. Sounds quite low on this one. Let's turn up a bit. Oh, it's glitching there. Look, the car's disappeared. And the sound is quite low, actually. Now, the buttons are configured a little bit weird in this game, um, but because it's Retro Arch, you can go into the settings and reconfigure all the buttons, so not a problem. Alright, well, this seems to be working decent enough. Okay, let's get out of there. As you can see, let me show you here. Input, that's where you can change all your input configuration. And we can do save states as well. Let's do a quick save state on this game. Uh, save states, I presume it's this button. All right, so let's move over here. All right, we're dead, so um, let's load up the uh, save state. Yep, it works just fine, no problem. And here we go, trying Afterburner on this device, and as to be expected, it's not really working too well. Afterburner seldomly does work well on these type of devices. Oh, the buttons aren't configured. <laughs> oh, well, I gotta configure the buttons. The joystick's not configured because it's an analog joystick, isn't it? But, uh, we're getting a bit of speed there, though. Yeah, the buttons aren't configured at all. They need configuring. But, um, well, it seems to be playing it.
All right, looking promising there. Let's insert a coin. This is promising. I'm liking this, it seems to be uh, working just fine. Let's blow that dude up. <laughs> yep, I'm happy to report this is working fine. Nice and responsive, full speed, no skipping audio. That's good. Okay, this is Silent Dragon by Taito. A game I've never even heard of, so this is going to be interesting. Three coins to start, what a rip off. I'll oh, we'll just go with the default guy. I have no idea what this is. Ah, oh, it's a scrolling beat em up. <laughs> it's interesting. This is an old SNK game. This is Search and Rescue, not running on Neo Geo hardware. So it'll be interesting to see how this works. Oh, that's pretty gruesome. Got it. <laughs> It looks like we can only fire straight ahead. This is a button to turn around our man. <clears throat> no, it doesn't look like there is. So this is Red Earth, a Capcom CPS3 game. Let's see how this one fares. Will this one play full speed? Let's put a... Yep. Let's put a coin in. Suppose we'll go Leo. He seems to be the default character. Never played this, have no idea what I'm doing, but um, it does seem to be running at the correct speed. I'm happy to report that the controls are configured correctly. I'm playing it with the built-in controls on this uh, device. It's not too bad. As I said, the joystick is a little bit loose. It could do with a bit less throw on it, but um, it's not too bad. 
Should be able to get a dragon punch out. Yeah. Yeah. No problem at all, really. Nice and smooth, no screen tearing, and it doesn't seem to be juddering at all, so nice. Let's finish him off with a special. Ah, oh, missed. Okay. Now I know a lot of people are going to be upset if I don't show the other machines, so I can tell you now that they all work perfectly fine, but I'm going to go through the machines, just one game per machine, just to show you um, the quality of them. So we've uh, looked at uh, Capcom, it's not Capcom uh, CPS, it's basically MAME, we looked at Final Burn Alpha, let's take a quick look at Famicom. As you can see there's 193 pages and each page has 8 games on it, so yeah, there are a lot of games for the Famicom on here. Um, let's just pick. Now I've got to say the video image on Famicom games is a bit softer than the arcade and PlayStation stuff when using the HDMI out. But I presume that's because, you know, the machine runs at uh, a lower resolution than the, the arcade stuff and the PlayStation. Yep, that's me dead. But anyway, there you can see Famicom games work just fine. Okay, let's move on to the next machine and that is going to be Game Boy. Oops. Okay, let's see if we can uh, check out a proper Game Boy game, not a Game Boy Color game, and see if uh, they run just as well. I presume they will. Hmm. The, the image is a little bit blurry, but you know, you can uh, let that off due to the uh, resolution of the original Game Boy. I mean, it is being blown up to a 4K screen here. So, uh, but yeah, seems to be working just fine there. Okay, next system. Next system is Game Boy Advance. How well is this gonna work? But I am very happy to see that they've kept the correct aspect ratio for Game Boy Advance games. Yep, seems fine to me. What do you guys think? Does that seem fine to you? The next system, I think it's gonna be Mega Drive. Let's take a quick look. No, actually, I think it's gonna be Game Gear. No, it's Game Boy Color. We already looked at Game Boy Color. Game Gear games, let's take a look at those. Uh, 100 Game Gear games. Uh, Iron Fist of Wrath 1. What the hell? <laughs> it's gonna be some Screenshots got nothing to do with Game Gear, that's for sure. Oh, it's going to be Streets of Rage, isn't it? It's going to be uh, translation from the uh, Chinese title. Waiting Soul with Samurai Showdown picture. Weird. Uh, Sonic. Oh, man, these don't make any sense. Let's just go with Sonic. Not supported. Great. Well, that is very strange, isn't it? It's loaded up with Game Gear games and none of them are working. I'm sure they worked yesterday. Um, nope, all right, well, Game Gear is not working. Let's go with Mega Drive. So we've got uh, 74 pages, so that's uh, 590 games. Yeah. 
Ah, missed it. Yep. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Now, what you're probably wondering is, does it play virtual racing? And apparently, it does. But how well, that's the uh, main point. Let's see. So-so. Uh, it's a little bit slow. Actually, in-game it seems to be just fine. Oh no, you can hear it juddering a little bit. But, uh... It's, uh, not too bad to play, though. Sound is a little bit juddery. Okay, so we're gonna finish off with Neo Geo. Let's see how good Neo Geo runs. What shall we do for, let's do Shock Troopers. That's a classic, isn't it? Neo Geo Shock Troopers, Shock Troopers 2. Let's see how well this performs. And this will bring us to a closing end of this device from Pow Kitty. Okay, well, let's booting up the Universal BIOS or the Universe BIOS. We must stop these crowds here. They have only 72 hours to accomplish their objectives. Okay, let's uh, start off the game. Select soldiers. Oh, we'll go with the girl because she's faster than the guy. Oh no, this guy's even faster. We'll go this one. Oh, his attack's a bit weak though. Eh, we'll go her. Getting a little bit of slowdown there. I don't remember if this slows down on a real Neo Geo. It's been a while since I played it on my Neo Geo. Alright, where are my buttons? Alright, yep. Typical Neo Geo setup here. Okay, well this one doesn't seem to be slowing down, so um, maybe Shock Troopers does slow down on real hardware. It's been a long time since I played it. So there we have it, that is the new machine from Pow Kitty. I have no idea what this is actually called because there doesn't seem to be any sort of um, you know, name on this, it just says Pow Kitty. But what I can tell you that there is a link in the video description down below, so check that link out if you want to buy one of these. Um, the device itself does come with a built-in 10.5 inch screen. It's not an IPS screen, so as you can see on certain angles it may not be the best screen to look at but you know when you're playing the machine and you're looking straight on at it you can see everything just fine and as i said uh, earlier on in the video this built-in speaker is really good plus if you want stereo sound you can always connect it to a pair of speakers or headphones or just play it on the tv um 
it is a bit silly that they put some games on here which are not supported and not every game is going to run perfectly fine but there's an awful lot of good stuff in here and the fact that it's got micro switch buttons and micro switch joystick is you know just proof that these uh, companies are starting to listen to the gamers and you know stepping up their game but they've still got quite a bit of a way to go but still the device itself is sturdily built. Like I said, I do wish the stick had a little less throw on it, but overall, not a bad product. And you may be wondering how good is the hinge on this? Well, it's actually very strong. Um, take a look at this. If I hold the actual device by the screen, as you can see, it's not closing down. That hinge is very, very strong. It's quite a, uh, quite sturdy as well so it's not gonna uh, snap off anytime soon that's for sure but yeah there we go hope you enjoyed the video guys and next time we'll be back with another device this is known as the zero two x another device from pow kitty here's the box and we'll just take a look inside here interesting it's like a PSP clone, but this promises to be a good one. So be interested to see how well this device performs. I've not tried this yet, but I do like the looks of it. It does look pretty good. Until next time, guys, keep on gaming and enjoy your games. See ya.